Hello and welcome to Buzz News. I'm Finn Vals. Here's your top stories this afternoon. A man has been sentenced with 11 years after killing a 16-year-old in a hit and run. A vegan restaurant has expressed its excitement to be opening in Bournemouth Town Centre. And the metal detectorist who has reunited over 200 lost items with owners over the last decade. Tyrone Franklin was sentenced at Crown Court today after killing 16-year-old Billy Lardner in a hit and run incident last June. Billy was coming out of work at Bournemouth Airport when he was tragically hit by the drunk driver. Kirsten Todd has more. I'm stood outside Crown Court where a sentencing has taken place for the death of 16-year-old Billy Lardner after he was tragically killed in a hit and run. Tyrone Franklin has been charged a sentence of 11 years with 50% in custody and 10 years disqualification from driving. Franklin had consumed five alcoholic drinks before he exceeded the speed limit, hitting Billy at 80 to 85 miles per hour, resulting in his death soon after at the scene. His brother Drew witnessed the life-changing incident as he was due to pick him up, leaving him mentally scarred forever. Witness statements from Billy's parents and brother were read out in court expressing their heartbreak and trauma from the incident. An app is in development to encourage companies to give staff paid leave to volunteer. Community volunteer Daniel Parkin is developing an app that aims to bring big companies closer with the community. The app, named Community Ripple, looks to encourage giving employees one day off a year to volunteer instead. Employees would be able to choose where they volunteered and arrange the dates all from their phones. Uh, the idea is to connect businesses more with um, uh, local community and in, in charity groups, make larger businesses in particular have a bit more of a, of a connection and support for, for the community. So the idea is to uh, contact employers, encourage them to pay um, every member of staff um, a day to go out volunteering, um, and then the app will allow the businesses to um, register um, for that, uh, that service. Uh, and the aim will be to have all the different community groups and charities on there. Daniel hopes that it will encourage more people to volunteer regularly and has already gotten a company ready to trial the app. So I've got a meeting up in Shrewsbury of all places. Um, where it's uh, a managing director of a company with 7,500 staff. He's prepared to give every one of them four days a year paid to volunteer. Um, so I'm hoping to get a similar commitment down here in, in, in Bournemouth, Paul and Christchurch. Um, and I think it will snowball. Finley Vowles, Buzz News. Vegivores, a natural vegan restaurant, is coming to Bournemouth Town Centre in February. Fran Williams has more. Vegivores is a vegan restaurant based in Reading, but is now taking their successes to Bournemouth. Owner Sarah Lowndes wants to show people how good vegan food can be. We're not about telling people um, what you shouldn't eat. Uh, we're, we're about telling people, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're interested, give it a try uh, and we'll show you just how delicious it can be. Sarah has been overwhelmed with the response she's received since announcing her restaurant. Oh my goodness, really positive, really positive. Uh, we, we really hoped that we would be well received. Uh, obviously we're not quite open yet, but we've been completely overwhelmed with the love uh, from everyone here in Bournemouth. Uh, it's been, been quite humbling actually. Veggie Fours is hoping to open its doors for the first time in February and looks to bring a new flavour to Bournemouth. Fran Williams, Buzz News. A metal detectorist from Bournemouth reunites lost sentimental items with owners for free. Charlotte Coles reports. Darren Wiles has been recovering lost items in the local area for the last decade. He mostly recovers lost items on the beach, with many of these items having sentimental value. Despite sometimes searching on the beach in the early hours of the morning, with some items taking up to 10 days to find, the service he offers is completely free and Darren says he expects nothing in return. Uh, I've been detecting since 2009 and then about 10 years or so ago I set up kind of what I thought would never be used, a free recovery service. Since then, Darren has helped 194 people by recovering 211 lost items. Ella's ring was one of these items. Her mum, Tracy, remembers how excited they were to be reunited with the ring as they thought it had been lost forever. I think... Was it the Euros were going on at that time? I think there was some sort of World Cup football going on. I think it was the Euros. And it was almost like England had scored or, or won the final. We were that loud. I think the whole street heard us. We couldn't thank him enough. I tried to give him money. I tried to give him beer. I've helped out everywhere I can for him because honestly, the guy is just, he's so special. Like he just keeps doing this and doing this and doing this and he expects nothing in return. 
and it literally changes people's lives it's not like just a small thing is it when you find something sentimental it's it's huge so yeah just absolutely brilliant honestly he is an absolute legend <laughs> This is just one of the 211 items found, with no doubt many more to go. Charlotte Coles, Buzz News. Toby Howe is now here with the Daily Sports News. James Guy caught up with Will Oakley to recap AFC Bournemouth's victory in the Cup against Swansea City last night. Yes, thank you, Toby. I'm at the Vitality Stadium where AFC Bournemouth smashed Swansea City 5-0 last night in the fourth round of the FA Cup. There were five different goal scorers for the Cherries last night and they scored three goals in the first 15 minutes, the first of which came from Lloyd Kelly in his first start since November. The stadium was absolutely bouncing last night and all the goals went in in the first half and Will Oakley was here to oversee it all. So, Will, a fantastic night for the Cherries. What was it like being here? Yeah, it was absolutely bouncing. I mean, I didn't expect them to be so rampant. Of course, it was against a championship side, but they just absolutely dominated the game. Everyone was playing good football. David Brooks got a goal and two assists last night, and it must have been brilliant to see him playing so well. Yeah, he was brilliant last night. Uh, Iriola said after that the right wing position is getting harder to pick every week because of how well everyone's been doing, but Brooks, he was brilliant, and he captained the side last night as well. Yeah, so this is where Solanke celebrated his goal. He took his top off with a fitting tribute to Jane Lanty's mother that said, rest in peace, Donna, on it. Uh, he got booked for his celebration, which Iriola spoke about uh, in the post-match press, saying it is difficult where to draw the line when you look at getting booked for that. But at the end of the day, Iriola said that it's just important to know that everyone's there for Jaden. How far do you think they can go in this competition? I mean, like I asked Iriola last night, there's five Premier League teams already out, five are guaranteed to go out this round. And like he said, it just depends on the draw. It depends who you're going to get. You know, you could get a tough draw in the next round, but let's see what happens. And um, I mean, they're only a few wins off Wembley now, so I don't think going to Wembley or winning some silverware is completely out of the question at all. I think it's a real possibility. So this is where Andoni Iriola sits on a match day, and he would have been Pretty pleased for what he was seeing last night, I would have imagined. So one of the players that really stood out to him was Alex Scott. Yeah, and Doni spoke really high of him after the game. He said he's really happy and really pleased with him. Uh, he's now putting up the offensive numbers that Andoni wants to see. He complimented how good he was his time at Bristol City as well. Uh, and he said that he's got to keep trying, got to keep fighting for his place because Bournemouth have a lot of depth there. Christie and Cook were also excellent in the midfield last night. And let's see what uh, the season brings for Scott, because he has been excellent so far. He was injured at the start, but I can only see him going up from here, really. Well, it's been a promising cup run for the Cherries so far. And stay tuned for Sunday, where the FA Cup fifth round draw will take place at around 2pm. So let's find out who the Cherries will be facing in the next round. Thanks, guys. That's all for now. Goodbye.